morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching or listening to this. And welcome to this week's episode of Behind the Bell, proudly sponsored by Champs Boxing Boxing Store and in association with the British and Irish Boxing Authority. This week we're joined by ever by Matt. Hi, Matt. How you doing, mate? It's going to leave you up, mate. Last week uh, we said we were going to interview you this week, but uh, before we get into that, we're going to we have to start the episode with some sad news. So, Matt, do you want to do you want to get into the unfortunate yeah. event for the last couple of weeks? Yeah, so so a couple of weeks before Christmas, um, Tony, who's who, who you can see the picture of, uh, he's my uncle, and um, he was he was very supportive. He was very, very supportive of the channel. I used to see him every week, and he used to tell me what he thought. Um, and he sadly lost him two weeks before Christmas. Um, he played a massive part in my life, a massive role model to myself, support the support throughout has just been amazing um so i'd like to dedicate this show to tony power um loving dearly always all love him and um i unfortunately didn't have the pleasure of meeting tony but some of the stories you've told me over the last few months he seemed like he was an amazing guy do you want to share some of your memories of tony with us Oh, there's so many memories. There's so many memories of Tony. Um, Tony was life and soul of the party. He, he, he was the first on that dance floor at a family party. He was the first one to to make everyone laugh, make everyone feel good. And um, and I've I've spoken to a lot of people lately, and uh, yeah, he, and there's no no one has had a bad word about him. Like he's just his soul was just so genuine and humble and loving. Um, yeah, he was he was just an unreal and I'm I'm incredibly lucky to have him as an uncle in my life. Um I, I was very close to him. Uh, we used to take him I used to take him to his hospitals, hospital trips, you know, up, up in London and uh yeah, we got up to some uh, some mischiefs. But uh yeah, he he was he was unreal, mate. He was he was wicked. Um he's he's left a I know he's left a massive a massive hole in our in our lives right now. We're all grieving. Um but this is just a little shout out to my family as well that I love them. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just, uh, yeah, it's just been a very tough time for us all. I know we've spoken a lot privately over the last couple of weeks and stuff, but I again want to say publicly, not just on behalf of the channel, but as a friend, uh, my heart condolences to you and all the family. Thank you. Right, so as we said this week, we are going to get to know you. So uh, do you want to take us back to <laughs> take us back to where it all began for your journey into the well combat sport and boxing world? Well, yeah. So I am um, as a as a kid, I was I was playing rugby, and um, and I uh, shout out to Dark Fordians, by the way. Hope you're all well. Um, yeah, I was I was playing rugby for Dark Fordians. Uh, that was a part of Saracens Academy back then, and. Um, and I, I, I was doing all right, but I, I fell out of love for it. I fell out. I, I fell out of love of just taking people down and leaving it, <laughs> basically. So, so, um, so I was, I was, I was, I was playing playing rugby with me mate, and um, and I went, oh, oh am I giving MMA a go? And he went, really? I went, yeah. He went, oh, I'll come, I'll come up with Jimmy. I'll be good for a bit of fitness. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. So my cousin Tony, his his daughter Leanne, his his their friend um uh, Michael uh, had a gym or has got a gym. And um and I, and I spoke to him and I, I want to give it a go. And he went, yeah, yeah, all right, come down. So I did. And guess what? My mate didn't turn up, right? So <laughs> so I've 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 walked in, I've I've walked in this gym totally unknowing what I'm gonna get let myself into. And um and it just grew from there, really. I, I started training for about three years before, before my first MMA fight, um, and yeah, I just I just fell in love. I just there 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 was it was a part of me, like a part of me I never thought I had. Was it about it that you fell in love with? Because just smashing each other in the head and kicking and punching, I don't see. <laughs> Do you feel like you had? An aggression, a hidden aggression about something that you needed to let out. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, I, I did feel that, but it was a cam camaraderie as well. You've been in the gym, Lee. Like, you, you don't get that 
that togetherness, that family feeling out of outside in the, in, in the big wide world. We're all together. Yeah, we kick the living crap out of each other, but we're, we're in it together. Like we're a team. We're, 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 we're there supporting each other. We're there, we're there through thick and thin. Yeah, um, I've never known an environment like it where you could be in there punching the crap out of each other and at the end of it, you're sitting there giving each other pointers and tips and encouraging each other. It's such a weird thing to explain to someone. But like he said, you, you don't feel as much like when you go off to work and that you've got your work colleagues and stuff and you spend a lot of time with them, but you don't feel your closeness and togetherness as, as you do in a gym environment. It's really hard to explain to people until you, unless you experience it. No, like even even with all the training, the people that don't um that, that that don't do the training or don't do or or, or are not into training or fighting themselves, training's hard. Yeah, like you're literally crawling through hell and back every night. Now that's what brings you together because the person next to you is going, "Come on, that," and I, and I'm doing that to to him and I'm doing that or or her. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, we're, we're together. We're, we're pushing for it together, and that's what makes us a tight knit community. I've I've still got good friends today from all them years ago walking through that gym for the first time. Like you do not, you do not get that anywhere else. Like honestly, it's amazing. I would I would honestly recommend training. Like even if you don't fight, just go go and. Don't experience the training and, and how hard it is. And, and honestly, it, it'll make you feel amazing. So it was four years later and then you finally stepped into the octagon. That was just amazing. So it was an amateur fight, um, no a, a no headshot belt. Um, and I trained like an animal for it. I, I trained hard. I lost about, lost about three stone for the fight. Um, walked in there. And it's, it was a very weird feeling, and, and I still used to get them feelings up to up to just over a year ago. If, your your emotions are all over the place. Like I, I didn't know whether I wanted to cry or, or be be excited, be happy, be sad, be angry. Be I, I didn't know where my emotions were going to be, and it, it scared me to an extent. It scared me to an extent, but with that, the fear, if you can control it, that's a good thing. That's a good thing to have because that means you want it. That means, you, that means you're hungry for it. And, and yeah, I, I went out there. I thought I've, I've still got the guy on Facebook, Ricky West. Um, yeah, we had, we had a good fight. Um, I come out victorious on a unanimous decision. Best feeling in the world. Best feeling. Couldn't get it. Couldn't get it anywhere else. So uh, what was next after that then? Um, obviously I got, I, I got, I, I got the bug then. I, I got the bug then. I, I had a week off. It, in fact, I had a couple of weeks off because it was just before Christmas. So they, so I had Christmas, went back, training again, training hard again. Nothing really in plan. Offered another fight. Uh, then I was moving up into semi-pro ranks. No, I didn't. I'm lying. It was pro. It was pro. It was a, it was a pro K1 fight. Um, and it was at the Troxy in in, in London. And um, yeah, fought a guy called Rocky. Um, he was quite extravagant. He was quite. He was quite. Uh, he was quite a character. And um, so I've walked out. So anyone that's been to the Troxy. And uh, and that's a long old walk out. That is honestly, I'm knackered by the time I get in the cage, right? So, <laughs> so I've got there. I'm walking, and my mate Scott, um, he was he was my coach back then. Um, still talk to him today. Spoke to him today. Um, and he went, right, Matt. This is what you've got to do. This, that, and the other. So I'm listening to him as you should. And I've turned around, and the fight was in a, it was a K1 fight in the cage. And um, look around, this, come this little stocky fella with a pink wig. So I'm like, right, okay. So I, I thought, oh, well, like, this is going to go either way. Like, 
um, yeah, this is going to go either way. Here. Full headshot fight, full K1, bare shins, no padding, just literally gloves. Um, yeah, so uh, so I, thought, I was like, right, so I, so the bell rung, I've come out, and um, I'm a, I'm a southpaw fighter, so I'm a left hander, and um, and I've hit him with a straight left peach. Uh, and I've seen him come back, but he sort of, like, he, he, he stumbled backwards, but he, he sort of, like, shook it off laughing at me. So I was like, okay, so there's me having another go. And, um, and yeah, he, I ended up knocking him down with an eight, and he got standing eight count. And he still come back laughing at me. And I'm like... What and I, like I sort of went back to the corner, and went, mate. What what's going on? Like if I was eating people like that, in normally like they'd be they'd be falling over. He went, mate. Just just roll with it. Just roll with it. He went, you're you're two rounds in already, and he went, listen, just don't do nothing stupid, and you've won the fight, All right? So <laughs> I've gone right. So I was like, I was eating him again, but I was eating him clean. I think it come to about thirty seconds left, saying like that. He was bleeding. He was he was struggling, and I was like, "How can I? He's got to go work the next day. How can I totally finish him off? I was eating him that badly that like, I'm frightened now. Like, and he kept coming back. He wouldn't stay down. Like, I was just like, Jesus, like, what what can I do? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, just yeah. So I just I just covered up for thirty seconds, let him. I knew he weren't gonna hurt me. I know. I knew he weren't gonna hit me hard, and um, yeah, second win. So uh, we went through some family grief after that, um, and I got offered another fight, and this was semi pro K, uh, semi pro MMA, and um, could have trained better. To be fair, I, I was training, but not how I should have been. Um, not really much sparring, things like that. All right. So, so my coach said to me in the car on the way to this fight, he went, "This fella reckons he can out wrestle you." Now, anyone that knew me, my wrestling was actually quite good. My stand up was absolutely shocking at back then. So, I was like, "Yeah, behave." You know what I mean? Like, he's mine on the floor. Like, but. <laughs> My diet didn't go to plan. I was eight kilos overweight with not even a day to go. So silly me, sauna suits, sweatsuits, saunas, training, training up to the morning of the fight. It was the same day, Wayne. And um, and yeah, lost lost the eight kilos. For people who don't know, how dangerous is it? to lose all that weight in the way that you did before a fight? It's, don't ever do it. So, obviously, I'll be talking about this a bit later to, in my career, but um, it could it could end up serious. Why you serious. Yeah, you're yeah, you're dehydrated. There's nothing left in your... Um, and there's nothing to, so the water in your body softens the blow. Yeah, so there's nothing in your body. So when you get hit, nothing there's, nothing, there's, nothing, there's nothing protecting your brain. There's nothing which will come on later on in the story. So yeah, so this fight was in a minute at this time. Yeah, so I, I went in there. The first thing first was like, no, I'm fucking taking you down. Like, you're mine. Yeah, so got him down, and um, I was getting rid of the fire, get, doing quite well on the floor with him, winning it, and um, he got up. He, he he managed to get out and get up, and um, taking nothing away from him, the man's an absolute beast, and um, and I've gone, I've gone to take him down again. Like I said, my stand up was rubbish then. Like I, I didn't really have much of a stand up. I just focused on my wrestling. Like so, I 
I went to take him down again. And I was like, I don't feel right. I don't feel, I, like, I feel weak. And um, he shrugged me off. My head fell out the rope of the ring. He should knock me clean out. I was snoring. Um, yeah, so that, so that was my first loss. How did you feel after that? It was hard. Yeah. It was, it, it, it was hard. Like, I think, I think a part of me knew that if I actually trained hard and I left everything in there, even if I lost, I would have been proud of myself. Yeah. But I didn't. And I, I, I disappointed myself. Got, didn't get really depressed, but I got quite low about it. And I got, I just went out and was getting drunk and partying and, had a bit of time away and yeah so yeah I just enjoyed enjoyed the the, the life of of a non-fighter for a good probably a month to six weeks yeah and then I, I, I went back in oh no that never that never entered my mind I just needed a break I just needed a rest um and yeah I just needed to sort of gather my thoughts back, and and it was either going to make me or break me, and it and it and it made me. Um, yeah, so it, I've, I've still waited for a few more months for another fight, um, and I was like, no, do you know what? I want to feel good and 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 fight this guy again. I fought him again; he knocked me out again. So, so he that's. That was over. The, the the rivalry was over. What I wasn't happy with was when my head was out of the ring, and he and he hit me. He hit me a few times while my head was out, um, which is actually illegal. Uh, you can't you can't do that. And it, it, it weren't his fault. He's, he's he's got a job to do. It's it's actually the referee's fault. But really, what they should do, in a way, I would have lost anyway. He, he would have, I would have lost anyway because the referee should have pulled you in the middle back in that position. So I would have, I would have gone anyway. I, I would have lost anyway, but I, I wanted to have another crack here. Again, still going out, still getting drunk, still, still being a wally. And um, he, he knocked me out again. Um, and this time it was quite savage. I was cut to, I was cut to pieces. Um, yeah, so but then I sort of I sort of mentally prepared for that. I sort of didn't go in there with the losing attitude, but listen, it is what it is. We we can grow from it instead of going on the mad one. Um, yeah, so went went from there. Few months of non-fighting, and uh, I thought, no, I need I need to work on my stand-up game. So I had a, had a few gym show fights, done all right, done well nothing really to report about they were, they were just learning fights and um and yeah I'd, I'd quite a few of them in that time and uh and they never looked back to mma i just went on to k1 k1 and muay thai so how did you make the transition from muay thai to boxing how did that come about a bit of a mad one really it was so I just come out of a fight and it was an absolute war. It was a Muay Thai fight. It was an absolute war. Um, people say I got robbed in that fight. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get the win. But um, people say I got absolutely robbed in that fight. And um, a guy I used to I used to train with, the now owns uh, Belvedere Boxing Club. And um, he went, you fancy a boxing fight? And I was like, yeah, all right. I, I, you, Lee knows me personally. I, I used to be out to fight myself in a phone box. So, yeah, so I was like, yeah, all right. Got that. Done that. Again, the gym politics. The gym politics. Um, I, I was the away fighter. He went to the judges and he won on the split. That was That was quite hard for me, to be fair. That was... That, that was quite hard for me. And um, I, t- I took a good three, four months out after that one. Um, did, did I want to do it anymore? But I, I used to think like that quite a bit, but I always sort of, I always sort of fought back. I always like, well, no, why should I? It made me, it made, it made me the person I am. Like, so yeah, um, 
went on to there. Uh, and then never looked back, never looked back into, into Muay Thai either. And <laughs> just started boxing. And then uh, had a few months out, um, I think I broke my leg, something like that, like being, being stupid somewhere along the line, probably. Um, and yeah, I started boxing from then, and then I had my accident. So I had, a, um, I had another boxing fight. I, uh, it was unlicensed, it was an unlicensed fight. Um, and I got hit here, and um, the vessels burst here. And I had, a, I had a bleed on the brain. Um, was in hospital for, for, for quite some time. Um, told was told I'd never fight again. Um, as you know, and as you probably hear by my story, that wasn't the case. I had about, <laughs> I had about, what was it, 2021? Yeah, 2021. So that was 2017. So I had them years out of when it's teaching. And yeah, yeah, and then uh, 2021 came and uh, time with the idea of fighting, got the all clear from the doctor. And um, a promoter, not mentioning his name, um, went, fancy another fight. Like, I just had my two heavyweights, so I just pulled out. So I was like, yeah, all right. And so we agreed, we agreed on money, we agreed on whatever else. And um and yeah, went in there, one in three rounds. Um highlight my career, thought of the world famous your call, Bethnal Green. And um yeah, it was unreal, unreal, what a great send-off that was. And I I'll I'll, I'll 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 got I got the win and that's it now. That's it. I'm not fighting again. I'm not teaching no more. I'm just doing this now. I'm just I'm just doing this, enjoying it, and um, and enjoying and enjoying the, the quiet time of family time. I've really missed out on being in, being in the gym all, all the time, and and yeah, I'm not I'm not in the gym no more. So it's weird. When you had the bleed on the brain, mm -hmm. how did that affect your life personally? Because obviously it's a brain injury, and yeah, yeah, it was hard. It was hard. It was um, obviously someone like me and others. When you're when you have a really big heart, um, never never forget whoever you'll probably watch this. All I'm going to say is heart of a lion, and you'll know who he is. Um, and you you don't take no for an answer. You're like no. But your body's saying, yeah, it is. You're not fighting. But your, your brain's going, oh, I am going to. Like, and you're fighting that battle. And it, it got me into, like, a depression, a, a depression state. And um, for, for a good good few years, good good some time. Um, it's only been recently I've sort of found my, found my peaceful and happy place. Um, yeah. It was it was a really tough time going through tests, uh, hospital. Um, funny story about that. I'll, I'll, I'll let it out. So, I um, I was in Durham Valley Hospital in Dartford, and um, and they went right. You need a CT scan, CT scan, Mr. Power. And I was like, yeah, all right. So um, so my 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 medication I had to stop it because of the dye. It was a dye they got put in your body. Yeah, and, um, so they put they put your dye in your body, and they they went. You're gonna feel a very weird sensation. I went, okay. So they've so they've put a dye in. Lee, I felt like I, I was I was well wet myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I was like, no, it's not. You haven't. It's it's the dye. And I know, oh my god, I'm, I'll just piss myself. Yeah, so a young girl in there as well. So it was sort of like I mugged myself right off here. Like, yeah, so I didn't I, I did wet myself for the information. I, I didn't. And uh, there was another time as well. So I was on oral morph for, for a little while. And um, so people that don't know oral morph is it's oral morphing. And um, and uh, it makes you a bit, a bit, a bit woozy and a bit like you're hallucinating, right? So my cousin Joey, He'll be watching this, 
and um, and he will laugh about it. And uh, he he come and see me, all right. So I, I, I could I could see everyone. I could still talk to everyone. And um, but I was trying to hold out so I can have a com- good conversation with him from Euromorph. And I couldn't hold out. I was in too much pain. And um, so they give me Euromorph, and I'm spaced. I'm I'm all out of fairies now. And he, he come in. I went. He went. You're right now. I went. No, Joe. Like, this is what this is what I've been told. He went. No, Joe. I went, just get me out of here and take me to TGI Fridays. And I was talking about TGI Fridays for like for ages, apparently. It's funny. Come home, listen to the doctor. I made a full recovery. The only thing I suffer with now is migraine. Um, yeah, it's good. But I don't get a lot of them. I don't get a lot of them now. Um, but yeah, and then that was me for a few years. I started going into teaching. And how did that come about? Um... So it was the same promoter I had that I had the accident on. Um, it was on the show, and uh, you know, why don't you ever go a bit of training, man? And I was I think I was about a good six months in from the injury, and I was like, yeah, I need to find something and keep in it. I wasn't just going to sit here and be depressed down my head. And um, and I did, and I and I and I just looked looked into it and doing bits now and again, and it, it just started growing from there. Really, it started it started growing from there. Um, and then went our separate ways into other gyms, doing different things, and um, and yeah, and then another family bereavement happened, and um, and a, a certain cousin let me know, um, we was sitting around our man's bed, and it was a tough time, and uh, we was talking, and uh, he went. Uh, I, I said so we were talking about boxing, and um, and Archie went, um, "Where's it? Where's it? You want to be?" Like, I was like, "My dream is to corner at the O2." You went, "All right, okay." You went, "That's that's an achievable dream. Like, there's there's nothing out there we can make that happen." So uh, a few a few days went by. And he, he rang me, he went, right, you're in the team. You're, you're in my team. Right. Um, just just come up to the gym and um, and, and help out where you, where you can. Right. So uh, so I was like, oh, no, I couldn't believe it. I just, I, I couldn't believe it. So went up to the gym and I, 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 was, I was nervous. I was, I was proper nervous, like such an elite fighter. Has asked me to be in the team. What am I? Am I good enough? I, I, like <laughs> everything was like going from Yedley. Like, like am, 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 am I good enough? Am I like? Does does he think I'm good enough? Like, so if I fuck up, like, it just all of it was going through my head. But the more I, I was like, some days I, I didn't do much. I was just there for company. Like I was just there just in case he did want anything or or he needed some pad work and and one of his trainers went there or was busy or, and, um, and yeah, I, I padded Arch a couple of times and it was, yeah, I, I learned a lot from him and, and his trainer, Richie. I did call him at the old call, uh, at, the, at the O2. I called him at the Royal Albert Hall against, uh, against, against Declan Geraghty. I was, uh, I was helping him out, helping him out there that night and um, he got the monumental knockout that you see um see Archie get um eight in uh eight, I think it was. I went mad, I went crazy. I went absolutely not. Like even Frank was looking at me like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, yeah, but it, yeah, it was and it was just it was just an unreal moment. Um I'm still proud of Archie today. Um always will be proud of him. And obviously he's watching our uh, a lot has happened since our last in, uh, our last uh, chat about about politics um, that we'll touch on another day. I thank him enough for for, for giving me that opportunity to be in his team. Um, we still talk about boxing. And we still we still talk privately on on what I think, what I don't think. Um, if he ever needs any help, he knows I'm here. And um, probably not in padding wise now, but yeah. Um, yeah, if he folded me up once with a, with a body shot in it, and I had a body protector on, and I was like, he still folded me. It's like a fucking train. Um, yeah, and I'll always love him. I'll, I'll always love him for that. And 
and he's 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 one in a million. That guy is he's, he's just amazing. We know quite recently I had a couple of health issues, which meant you've had to retire from actively taking part in the sport. How have you been finding that? I know you said earlier you're now at your sort of in a pace, but how was it at the beginning when you realised it? You had to hand the gloves up. Yeah, like the temptation's always there, Lee. The temptation's always there. Not exactly fighting, but like getting a phone call and going, "Oh, Matt, you pad me for an hour. I'll give you, I'll give you a certain amount of money." I'd love to. I'd love to do that, but my, I've got to learn to listen to my body now. Yeah. And um, and yeah, like I'm just taking everything in my stride. I'm just sort of like it's okay not to feel okay and but what are you going to do about not feeling okay are you going to just stay there not feeling okay or are you, or are you going to rise above it and that's the question i ask myself and nine times out of ten i'll rise above it like i'll always i'll always uh i'll always find a way to to get myself up um probably a couple of years ago i'd be on my i'll be on my ass so I've worked on myself a lot recently, mentally, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll find myself in a in a in an easier and happier place. No, no negative people, no negative things. Or well, obviously in the past couple of weeks, but yeah, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll find myself in a, in a in a sort of happier place. Still got work to do, but he's, I'm I'm there. I'm, I'm working there, and it gives me a purpose. Uh, there's a few things I'm working on. Uh, I am still in the game, but not where I want to be. Not where I want to. Where I wanted to succeed in, and um, but at the same time, I'm sort of I'm still happy because I've been there and I've done it and I've got the t-shirt, and I've 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 met, I've I've had the privilege of working with with some with some good pros and um and trying to help them on their journey which i can which i can get um so yeah um after archie i opened up and i went to i went back to michael's i went back to michael's when i met some some unbeaten cancer research fire um and uh oh probably next week <laughs> <laughs> And, um, and uh, yeah, I was there for a couple of years, and then I, 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 things didn't work out there, and I branched off. I, I branched off, done my own thing, um, done my own little sort of freelancing, and um, and yeah, that, that was going well. That was going good. Um, and then I had an offer. Um, I'm not going to go into much. So I don't really want to talk about about the situation, or don't want to give it the satisfaction. But I got offered uh, 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 to run a gym. Um, and yeah, that that didn't work out. Um, I had some quite cool, ex well, a cool experience in there. That was about all I got. Um, and uh, done some work with Ted Cheeseman. Um, and learned learned a lot of Ted. Um, got a lot of respect for Ted. Um, if you're watching this, I hope you're well, mate. And um. Yeah, yeah, done that. Then I had my last fight at your call, and then that was it. Game over, finished. One thing I've realised, obviously knowing you, but especially over this chat, is your resilience. Things you try something doesn't work out, you try again. A bit like a fight, you get knocked down, you get back up. That's a song, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But that comes along with a lot of whiskey drinks and lager drinks. <laughs> I'm going for them and all. <laughs> <laughs> you are now. You're allowed to now. <laughs> but um, what, what do you feel was in you to have that motivation? Because a lot of people would have just walked away and said, okay, I've tried it, that's it now. So what, what gives you the willpower to keep going? I... I've, I've I've learned the hard way. Like I've always had someone saying you can't, and 
and like my whole life has always been like, no, I'm proving you wrong. I'm, I'm proving you wrong. And, and it, it, it's just become, I'm still like that today. I'm still like, I was, I was like it, this, I was like it this afternoon. You know what I mean? Like, I need to go out, I'm, um, I'm out, I'm out this weekend. So I had to go out, pick up a few bits and, um, and so I've got like a, an electric wheelchair. Um, so I can walk, but it's, if it's long distance, I'd, I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. So I've got this electric wheelchair. My mum went, why don't, you, why don't you get in a chair? I'm, no, I'm walking today. She was like, you're going to hurt yourself, I went, probably, but I'm walking today. And, um, and yeah, it's just, it's just in me. I, I can't even explain it, Lee. It's, I'm, I'm a quiet, I've got a big heart. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And if I'm driven and if I want it as bad as bad enough, I, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it in any way possible. And, um, yeah, and it, it was the same as fighting. People said, man, no, nah, come on. No, I'm going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And, I, and that's what I've done. Maybe I should have Maybe I should have finished earlier. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have, but I'm happy I didn't because I've got all this experience to pass on to people and, um, and people that want to know about it. Um, there's obviously loads more that I haven't really touched on, but yeah, it was very. Um, I'm very, I'm very driven to where I want to be, and I'm very, uh, and and I've also learned the hard way on the people you bring with you. If if people go through your hard times, they deserve to go through the good. But when people don't go through the good times, or people when they go through the good times and not through the bad times, they're, they're worth nothing. They ain't worth your time because they're like leeches. They just keep they just keep sucking out of you, like all the goodness out of you. And I've I've got rid of them people. I'm I'm, I'm happy. I've got the people I want around me, and um, and yeah, you, you you do learn that on the way, and especially in the fight game. Um, Lee, you've pro you've seen this probably more than anyone recently on the way I am when someone says, oh, no, I'll get this. I'll go. We had dinner, didn't we? And um, we had a full blown row on who's paying. Yeah, like, that's, 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 that's something I'm not used to because of that reason. Because if the way the way I, I was and the way it was around me was if if someone's going to do something good for, for me, I've got to go do something good back. Yeah. And I'm quite reluctant and I'm, too, I'm, I'm very like, like you said, no, I'm paying. No, no you ain't. No, you ain't. I'll, and, I'll, and I'll argue with you. And, and I'm the same with anyone. I was I was on my I was on the phone to one of my friends, Jay, last night. And she went, no, Matt, you reap what you sow. You have you have helped so many people out, and you you haven't asked for nothing back. Like it's now's, now's your time to to get what you deserve. And I and I, I still can't see it, Lee. I still I, my my blinkers are on because, quite frankly, I don't really trust many people. Um, there's probably about two or three people that I trust. I can trust. So, yeah, I don't... That's the thing I have to say to you. Like, I don't want nothing from it. <laughs> where you've been in that environment for so long, you felt like I was doing that because I'm going to expect something back off you. Yeah, yeah. And that's the sad thing I'm seeing with this side of the sport because I'm getting more into it now, where you don't see as a casual fan. Yeah, there is the family, but family's fighting, families are dysfunctional. So I get there's the family and the brotherhood. But a lot, what comes with that is a lot of dysfunction and a lot of people trying to step over people. Well, you obviously know what I mean, but I mean, like, in explain, I've only just seen that and it sort of sat, it, it dampens the... Well, uh, again, it goes back to what we always say on this pod, or you always say, you've got your sports side of boxing and you've got your business side of boxing. And the more higher up you get in the rankings and the more better you get, 
you turn, it turns into the business, the sport's taken away. So your sport's like a grassroots and your business and your politics is the, the more successful you get in, keep saying the sport, but in the game, really, it then turns into a business, as you keep saying. And that's the side I'm seeing a bit more of. And it, it's, it's, it's a weird feeling to see to see both sides. Yeah, like, it ain't it ain't all, in famous words of Rocky, it ain't all sunshines and rainbows, is it? People, people will only see what they want to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, past relationships. Like it was all nice when they're on fighting and, and they're getting their inside seats and they're there. But not until they actually see what goes into the prep of that fight that they're like, whoa, hold on a minute here. Like they don't see the the driven and waking up in the morning to go running and then going to the gym. I was when I was fighting K one and Ty, I wasn't even working. I was just fighting, and um, so I was up running in the morning, and then in the gym at ten o'clock in the morning, and then coming home, eating, and having a little nap, going to train, uh, go back training. Like. And it has, it has ended a couple of relationships. Do you know, like people, people didn't want, people didn't realise on how, how it ain't that glamorous. No. It's actually very hard, and it's very hard work, and it's mentally draining. And being with a fighter around a couple of weeks to a week at a fight, it ain't easy. It's, it's the mood swings. It's the not when I say mood swings, I don't we don't go around lamping no for your, your missus. Do you know what I mean? Like you get you you're moody, you're quiet, you're snappy. And that's all because of nerves, because you've worked so hard for it. You've worked so hard, but you just but you want to get that extra that extra it's, it's just all, all nervous energy. And it is it's, it's it's toxic, it's negative. Um, I do wish I got some kind of psychology while I was doing it because then I could have probably dealt with that, the mindset better. But I, I still I still feel like I slip into that mindset sometimes, especially with these hospital appointments. Yeah. Um, I've, I've come, come in on and off. Like I sort of, that's my fight there. And I'm sort of, I'm sort of, not fighting, fighting, but like it brings that butterfly back. It feel it, it yeah. It, it can. It is meant to win, especially when you retire. Like, like look at Ricky Hatton yeah. uh, when he retired. Um, Tyson Fury. Sixteen thousand times he's retired. <laughs> yeah, no, but the, the main one when he was when he was in trouble. Yeah, like. It happens to all of us, and it's. I don't drink. I know I was joking about drinking earlier, but I, I ain't touched a drop for about a good five, six years now. So, so yeah, it was like I can I can sort of get why how how bad it gets with the drink, the drugs, food. Food is my guilty pleasure. Like I can I can eat. I had a McDonald's before I come on. Um, yeah, like I can get it. I'll get it. I understand it, and there needs to be more help for even grassroots fighters um, and and pros. There needs to be more help for their mental health and and, and their health in general for when they retire and um, and whatever they decide they want to do after that. They 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 need help. We 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 do need help. We've at the end of the day, we used to fight for your entertainment. It's, it's like you say, it's dangerous. It's dangerous what we used to do and you used to pay your money to, to watch us do it. And then when when it's time to finish and when it's time to go, where are they then? Because the fan, the next person. Hmm. We've had our fun with you, now we're on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, and, and it's sad. It is, it is sad. And... um. Anyone that is retiring and struggling, keep strong, guys. You'll get there. It, something, something will happen and something will come together and it will just it'll be like a massive weight off your shoulders. 
Um, but yeah, there needs to be more help. There definitely needs to be more help for, for fighters or home retired fighters. All right, so I finished the sentence. My experience of boxing has made me proud. Like you say, the resilience. Like, like you're my, my knowledge of boxing now. I've been with the grassroots, I've been with the amateurs, I've been with the pros, I've been I've been in between. Proud of that. I'm I'm one of them one percenters in the world that that has been there, that has done it, has received it, has given it. And yeah, it, I'm I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that and I'll always will be proud of that. Complete this sentence. Next for Matt Power is Branding. Right. And behind the belt. <laughs> Good go and get that one in there. And final question, and I hope I don't buck this one up because this is usually your one, but you're on a desert island, trapped on a desert island, and you're only allowed to take three boxers, dead or alive, with you. Who are you taking? Archie Shot, Roy Jones Jr. Are you going to plug in that you got to meet him last week? Why is it? Why say that? Why? Why? Why are you? Why are you name dropping? <laughs> How was that experience? All right, unreal. Love him. Um, and uh, this guy, oh, Mr. Ali, greatest, the goat. Would you take Ali at the start of his career, the middle of his career, or at the end of his career? Definitely, will take him at the end of his career. Um, I'd take him probably beginning to mid. Um, just his movement. He, like I keep saying it, like Tyson Fury, his generation is Muhammad Ali. He was a heavyweight, but he moved like a middleweight. Like the man was unreal. I I love the way he boxed. I love the way what he fought for, for out the ring, and what for his beliefs. Um, yeah. The man, I love him. I, he is my hero. So, yeah, Archie Sharp, Roy Jones Jr. and Muhammad Ali. No, they're good choices, Matt. Well, Matt, it's been a, a pleasure to be able to share a bit of you with everyone that I get to meet and see when we meet up and talk privately. Um, your story, and I know you've only touched on your story, but... It is an amazing story of resilience and the never say never attitude. So never give up. You. Never give up. Anyone that's watching, don't ever give up. Go and go and reach your dreams. I've got people like that man supported me through everything, not even in boxing and fighting, just in life in general. I mean, I, I was I was very lucky. Um, so yeah, never never give up. It'll all come together in the end. Everyone, thanks again for joining us. I know the last couple of weeks has been a tough one for you, but thanks for opening up and sharing your story a little bit to us all. Please, guys, remember, hit us up on our socials. If you've got anything you want to talk to myself or Matt about, we're here 24-7. Just reach out to us. Matt, have a good week. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Subscribe, and, guys. Uh, subscribe. Subscribe. And next week, uh, hopefully, you get to grill me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Take it easy, everyone. Till